Uh, welcome back, everybody. And uh, we have a special guest with us today. So if uh, if we could step back into 5.4, the paid principal policy, and uh, I put it to uh, council. Councilor McGuinn. I'd like to, Jen, I'm going to try and seek some consensus. Committee amends the draft A principal's policy. <clears throat> to reflect a target pay at the 67th percentile to comparator organizations. She's sorry? Comparator organizations. Yeah, just honestly, this this comes out of some discussions with uh, several of our colleagues. Um, really, I'm trying to achieve some consensus here. I, I think the 75th is a little bit higher. You know, uh, myself, the mayor, Councillor Race earlier, we were talking about this. Before sitting at the 70, or pardon me, the 67th percentile, really what we're saying is, you know, the town of Hinton aims to pay more than, you know, two out of three other organizations. Uh, puts us in the top third. I think that's I think that's a noble objective. Uh, by the same token, I think the seventy fifth the seventy fifth percentile is is a touch too high. Um, I considered sixty. I think sixty seven is a, a bit of a, a sort of middle area. Thank you. You had your hand up. I, I did. Thank you, sir. So I don't want to speak directly to your motion. I do have some questions for um, administration. On page on page fifteen, I think the middle of that page, it talks about eleven percent of our non-union employees make below the fifty percent threshold. Eighty percent are making at seventy-five or higher. I I know it's in the report, but how many people are actually making less than fifty percent? Um. So. Um, and you said it is in the report. So it's if you go to the bottom of page 16, so below the range of 50% non unionized employees, that's three position and three employees. So three. Okay. And I do have another question, sir. But it will be sure. Clear. Yep. Okay. And just a little bit below what we were, we were talking, it talks about there are significant constraints in reducing the compensation percent not below 75%. And the, the second dot there says, Reduction of unionized wages generally results in strike. Well, we've got a four-year contract with the union, so we're not talking strike here. We're not. We're good for four years. Yeah, as long as we didn't make moves within the year to approach the union, say we want an LMU, um, but no strike not happen until twenty twenty six. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And for clarity, earliest. Just council kind of sort of I hate to do the point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, we're I put forward a direction on the floor. My understanding is that we're supposed to be speaking to the direction that's on the floor, not sort of venturing off on different areas. Uh, I thought it was for understanding purposes, but uh, uh, fair enough. Um, so, as it relates then to the uh, consensus, um, any comments? Councilor Taylor. Yeah, I, I don't support that. That's too high for me. And I'll tell you why. Um, we have a historic practice of paying town employees more than the prevailing wage, and we're going to be making that final decision next week. The idea is to keep salaries higher than most surrounding towns, including Edson. This will still do that. 
So technically it's close, or be playing close to the 75th percentile. And while this is an improvement, um, still municipal staff would get be getting paid more than three quarters of the peers. But why should we do that? Obviously it's nice if we can pay everybody at a really high level, but in the real world, we have limited resources. Like any government, what we pay in salaries to some, we take in taxes from others. And what reason exists for doing this at such a high level? But I would support the 60th percentile. One wonders whether a class of people in Hinton's being created that deserves better pay, at 60th percentile, than a lot of a lot of people better pensions, defined benefit pension plans, above average benefit plan, early retirement, far greater job security than those who support them. And especially now we're considering paying them at these platinum levels, even at 67% with entrenched, uh, I don't know if we're gonna be still talking about the entrenched cost still living in COLA clause. Well, I'm all for paying good salaries, attracting and retaining good staff and getting good service. But it doesn't go into this high amount and entrenching um, amount to entrench uh, this uh, level of pay, isn't it? Uh, it's something that seniors and a lot of working people in Hinton don't have with all these benefits that I've just uh, mentioned. And I hope hope we're not doing it because uh, the perceived power of our local unions. So isn't council vote reducing inequality and increasing efficiency and creating a system where everybody's equally treated fairly without government favor? And can one really claim that this premium pay and benefits approach has led to a problem free government in Hinton? Because it, because it attracts outstanding employees and motivates them to superior efforts? Um, or in the past decade, with this premium level of pay and all these benefits, we've seen expensive staff turnover, high legal costs, misgrant opportunities, poorly placed photo radar sites, expensive eco-industrial par parks, and uh, a few years ago, information on budget surpluses not being passed on to council. So if so, what reason do we have thinking that if we continue with the same approach, that these type of problems are going to go away in the future? So highlighting one level of benefit, much higher than the other level of benefits at a 67%, it's not something that I favor. Thanks. Mayor Michaels, and then I'll be back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on our previous conversations also at committee, uh, I, I feel this is a, a good compromise. The majority of our employees are above the 60th percentile. Uh, I, I put a direction to, to keep it at 60. Uh, this has been an accumulation over uh, over a decade. And it will take quite some time to uh, readjust whatever number we would like. But if the number is lower or higher, um, I, I think uh, those have grave They come with a lot more work in order for it to be implemented. To me, the being two thirds, you're telling, uh, your employees and your community that we are in the top third that is pretty fair it's not by 75 but we've been following an informal 75 and we have to live with previous decisions to some extent and try to get there um at a pace that's reasonable and, and as i said on page 16 and 17 uh it's 50, 64 uh Positions are at, at over over the 60th percentile. That's a big chunk. So to me, 67 is a, a, it's in the right direction. We re revisit this once a term. Uh, I think there's other changes to make this, and um, I'd rather sacrifice getting this perfect, uh, absolutely perfect, with all of our needs be, uh, in order to to move forward and I, and focus on other things. I think it's going to be too challenging in order to really, really create a plan to get uh, the entire organization uh, at a certain point. So uh, to me, the, uh, with, without dissecting everything, and if somebody can do so, then uh, I'm all ears to potentially change. I think that's a great compromise from what I've heard from all counselors around this table. Uh, I think that gets us uh, in the right direction. It may not be perfect for some, uh, but uh, I could support 67th percentile at this time. 
Thank you. Councilor Race. Thank you, sir. I'll be quick. So 75% of our union employees are making the 75% uh, 80 or um, 80 percent of our non-union are at that 75 threshold only three non-union employees are below the 50. so it's kind of status quo those who are making 75 percent of the threshold they'll continue to make that we're not going to knock them back to 67 but new people coming in will start at the 67 percent of those that so Right. When we say we want to introduce or come in at the 67th uh, people who are at the 75th, they're not going to lose money. They will stay where they are. Is, is, that, that, is that a question? Well, I'm, I'm just asking. Oh. If I'm some clarity. Administration, um, through the chair to uh, members of the committee. So there's several options available. But if we do pick a lower amount than what was historically uh, chosen, we will have to get legal involved in order to really have a good plan on how we can make the uh, scalable wages back. Uh, because we have two different parts of the organization. We have uh, the legal implications of doing that. And so we just need to make sure that we have legal involved if we are going to uh, look at any lower percentile than what has been, we'll say, set out in historic practice so um we will have a plan as administration but just here today um i, I don't know if we have the details of how we're going to do that until we have a set percent so so may i please so my thinking was if we do go to a 67 percent of those that are making or are out 75 will stay there they'll, they'll stay there for as long as they um, work for the organization or the you know, they fall on that greater step thing. But new people coming in would fall within the 67. Nobody would lose money. But, but I may not be understanding it correctly. Yeah, so, so through the chair, so the, the more complex part is that we have to align this with our collective bargaining process. And we have to determine how we're going to reconcile those two because um, you know, it, it's not overly complicated, but what you're talking about is, you know, what they're making, you're not going to roll it back, but what you do is you red circle those stats. So over a uh, X period of time uh, with cost of living, uh, they would stay stationary and then eventually they would just be caught up with whatever that target percentile is. Uh, the question I think that is going to be really tricky is how do we reconcile that with non-union uh, making changes do we want to make changes immediately with the collective bargaining process that's on until 26 with my priority of trying to implement equal pay principles for everybody so if we lower them down now um with non-union staff who are already making less than their unionized counterparts with unionized staff uh, being immune until the collective bargaining system those are the tough questions that I think we need legal opinions on. Uh, but the actual mechanisms of bringing wages back into alignment of target percentiles are, are relatively simple. Sorry, Councillor McCoy, no, no, I no, sort sorry. of missed you, but please go ahead. I uh, yeah, no, um I think I think the important thing is is that as a council we achieve and demonstrate some collective will. And again, I'm just trying to speak as plainly as I can. Some of the councillors I've talked to have favored, you know, in the neighborhood of 60%. Some of the councillors I've, you know, I, I've heard indications that they don't favor any movement, that they'd rather stick at 75. Again, I think what we're trying to achieve is a bit of a consensus in between the two. Uh, and I guess, respectfully, um, you know, if, if one is willing to settle at, say, 60%, uh, as as a target for uh, where we're targeting our pay principles, the difference between sixty percent and sixty seven percent is really seven percent. I would agree, having been somebody who actually favors a sixty percentile for myself only, I don't think seven percent is going to solve any of the problems. For example, that Councillor Taylor highlighted, they're not. 
I think really what we're trying to find is an arbitrary number that most of council can back and support. And in this case, I think mean, 67% sort of splits the middle difference. Uh, so again, in this case, I'm just trying to find something that's going to represent the will of council as a whole, which is why I put forward 67%. Thank you. You know, I've got myself in queue and, and I guess in comment to how do we get there, I think it took us 11 years to get here. I expect that if there's a change made, it's going to take that long to adjust. Um, the other side of this report that, that we're not talking about today, though, was, uh, and I reread it, um, was the report from the consultant that we hired. Not only do we pay more, but our benefit package is one of the best benefit packages of any of the communities. And I think that what people earn is a combination of their pay and all the other things that the organization provides. Um, and I think that um, um, the town of Hinton corporate has provided a pretty good package, both pay and benefit. And uh, the, 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 the unfortunate part of it is that's all been arrived at and perhaps it should have been dealt with a lot earlier, but without any input from any council at any time, it just started happening. And uh, I think um, from a perspective of fairness, um, Councillor Taylor brought this up. Um, we've all been elected to sort of represent taxpayers, ratepayers. And I think that's an important consideration on this. And, and so um, I think that um, we we do need to consider the, the pay package, both pay and, and benefits, and, and it's important. I mean, every 10% costs us 100, and, well, essentially a 1% a, a uh, increase in taxation. And that's really what it all comes back to in, in doing this is is to is to say, uh, is the community any better served? Now, I've heard that, you know, we're going to lose people and we're going to. But all of this rollover and all of these things that have happened in the past happened with this regime in place. So I, I, I it's a it's a tough decision. But I think for me personally, it's time for us to to to, to begin to have those discussions to, uh, to uh, and it is hard, but to have those discussions to bring it to the right line. My thoughts. Uh, Mayor Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question to administration is, should committee be discussing whether this applies to new hires specifically or, and not rolling back? Because I, I hear some members uh, of committee speak to that, including myself uh, in the past of, uh, I have no issue not affecting previous contractual contractual agreements with employees and leaving them there. And as Councillor Baber said, it took over a decade to get here. I don't mind respecting the agreements we have, but this is the new threshold for moving forward. Should we be clarifying that it is for that, or do we need a like a, a second direction or consensus in order to? But I believe we're we're sort of making an assumption that we're rolling back. And that wasn't my intent with speaking in favor of this. This is just to be the future target. And then we decide collectively on, are we rolling back or not? Any comments on on how, from a procedural standpoint, we should address that question? Uh, through the chair to the members of the committee. I don't think any motion would be required. You know, that uh, the methods of how or the the methods of how we get to the 60 to 70 percent that will be up to administration and you know and i you know unless there was really aggressive means that council wanted to get there at within a certain amount of time but my interpretation from the very beginning is if we were ever to look at adjusting anybody's wages it would it would be done while respecting the contractual obligations because we don't have really any <clears throat> authority to make that decision unilaterally right so we have to do that slowly we have to do that with with that care but that would be uh that'd be an administrative function of how we get to that percent time can i follow up mr chair i'd love if you would so um that that specific point could council even debate that like getting there slowly i mean i may not even want that i think it's if you contractually 
you're at the 68th percentile or 71st, let's say we land on 67, you, 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 you never go back. Uh, like that's my intent. Could we get consensus? And I'm not saying that's the will of committee, but I think a big part of this is, is, is respecting what we have, but just making a decision for new employees and never touching and rolling back. Could we even consider that? Or is that not an option? And that may change part of the dialogue. Through the chair, we could. Um, that's a tricky one because wages and where they sit on a comparison of percentile, they'll ebb and flow depending. Um, you know, really what you would end up doing is use the most recent study of where exactly they sit. And if they are above the 67th percentile, you increase them at that point. And that would be the percentile that they'd use. But a percentile of compar comparables is not a contractual uh, agreement, right? That might be where they fall, but um, but you certainly could. You could you could bake that into uh, into the individual contracts. That if you are above this certain level, you will remain there. And, uh, uh, your wage will be adjusted differently than others but, but once again my priority in this um people above the 67th percentile might uh, kick it, but my priority is to make everybody equal um, i think that it causes more issues if the if you compensate employees differently um then if it is even at a lower amount but it's all the same because you're still uh, you're still embracing internal inequities and in how people are compensated. I think that's what me personally, I'm trying to get away from on this one. Thank you. You're good? Oh yeah. Councilor Taylor. And if we could at this point, let's keep our comments as it relates to the consensus. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, I don't like the number, but one of the reasons why I like the straightforward uh, explanation of the number that you're gonna come to is that I believe that we're policy and their implementation. And we've hired uh, an incredible group of highly talented people here. that are gonna go away and they're, whatever the number is, they're gonna implement that number and they're gonna implement that number in the most, uh, I don't know, uh, practical, fair. fair, straightforward manner uh, possible. And we either trust them to do that as we fired them to do the job or we don't trust them to do that. I think they can go away. And then when they come up with that plan, they can come back and report the plan to us. I don't even think the onus is on us to approve the plan once they've reported it, unless there's some extreme red flags or something. I think that's just what we do versus what they do, frankly. No, sir, race. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I will support this 100%. What this motion is saying to me is we're going to move this to regular. If if this, if this um, because we're outstanding right now, it's going to go to regular for a vote. So we're going to have a week or more to talk to people about this. And hopefully when we come back to regular, I'll still have my mind made up, but I'm going to go with the 67% percentile, but I do have one question, sir. Um, where does the STEM program come in? If I'm at the 67 percentile and I'm at step three, am I supposed there? Can I not make more money? If I get an evaluation? <laughs> um, to the chair, I, I will refer to Nikia mostly on this one, but I believe we will talk about the uh, salary range just being at that percentile. Yeah, um, so there, I think it would depend on how we go about it, but if you were at step three, but step three is at the 60 70th, and the 60 70th determined at the top range, then you're frozen there until that becomes the top. Mm -hmm. So you could be frozen wherever you are on the steps and not see increases for however long it takes to eventually get to the 67. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Those are us. Um, so I've been quiet on this. I, I will support the 67. I'm not a fan of it, but the reason I want to support it is because I don't want it any lower. 
Um, I'm one of the counselors that I think 75 is reasonable based on costs, based on a lot of things that uh, might deter people from coming to Hinton, cost of living, for example, and things like that. Um, I don't agree at all with the past comments made by another counselor. I found it interesting that on one side of their mouth, they said one thing and then just said that they're highly professional people. So I find that kind of interesting. But anyway, I will support this, but um, uh, yeah, we'll see what, what regular brings. So thank you. Let's keep comments as it relates to other counselors off the table. I don't clarification I, on that comment. I take some offense to that. He suggested I said something improper. There's no way I did. Clarify what you said, please. The comments that you made about the administration, about how much they get paid and all the mistakes they make. And then, and then you said the other side about But let's 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 not again, as the chair, I don't want any more comments as it relates to another member of this committee. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it moves the issue forward. So let's just leave that all off the table, please. Any other comments as it relates to the consensus? Councillor Ostasha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as a councillor who previously did support the 75th percentile, and I've outlined those reasons before, I think it's important that we are an employer of choice and that we are able to attract quality candidates. That said, Bill, uh, I am willing to support the 67 percent. That's that's part of the uh, consensus request here. I think being in the top third of our municipal comparators still gives us a competitive advantage. And if it comes down to a decision between going to Hinton or going to one of the municipal comparators that maybe doesn't pay as well, I still I think we will still be able to attract those quality candidates. And that's what I want to make sure happens is that we are attracting and retaining quality candidates to work at the organization and support the strategic plan that council's come up with. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I call the consensus to question, any other comments? All right, then I call the question to seek consensus that committee amends the draft pay principal policy to reflect a target pay at the 67th percentile to the comparator organizations. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Uh, step one. Uh, any other changes? Oh, Councillor Rice. So I do have a question before we carry on. And if it's not appropriate, just let me know and I'll have brought. In regards to um, this last item, and Councillor McGill raised a good point. He made a motion and then I put a question to administration. So how do we do that when we're dealing with an auction item, a motion is put on the floor right away how does a counselor ask questions to the, the document? Uh, through the chair, I believe that the, the chair ruled that that was a clarifying question. So I, I'm okay with that to the ruling of the chair in those situations. Okay, so are you saying if a motion is on the floor, a counselor can still ask questions of the, you know, the action item to admit? Yeah. That's yes, correct. It's important that everybody understands. I think it's a complicated and a big issue, um, which is why I was why I allowed you to, to ask a question. All right, council. Uh, any other changes you would like to see? Any other? Council, how would you like to move forward? Mayor Mayor Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I'm just trying to wrap this. Um, I would like to seek consensus to um, to remove section 2.3 of uh, 
policy 1902. Uh, and if I may speak to it, um, I'm I'm open to a few. Uh, I'll throw that one on the floor first. Uh, I think the way the calculation is at the current, uh, the way it's currently drafted is uh, uh, a bit is, is way too high. Uh, hypothetically, even this year at a 7% uh, inflation rate plus 2% of uh, non-unit or unionized, that's nine divided by two, a 4.5% a 4 uh, salary increase would have been approved without any motion of council. And I feel that's too high. So we either tackle this by adjusting the equation, which I believe should be lower, much lower, or we remove it, which is what we've been doing in the past. So uh, I favor uh, removing it, or at the very least, lowering uh, that uh, 5% uh, annually before council must approve it by resolution. And I put that to my colleagues to see where they stand and uh, either uh, move on with this or with an alternative. Thank you. Well, Councillor Oz, I saw your hand come up. Nope. Okay, Councillor Magoon. I, I have a number of thoughts actually as related to that, the COLA adjustment. Um, one of one of the possible solutions that I thought about with this was that for myself, I think COLA is quite important below a certain threshold of pay. I think uh, for some people, depending on uh, their total salary over the course of the year, um, COLA has a much greater impact uh, than those who are making, I don't know, I'll, I'll pick a, a larger number, to excess of $150,000 a year. I think somebody who's struggling to make ends meet with 60 grand, you know, compared to somebody who's making 150, COLA is, is remarkably different. I'm not saying that it's not important, but it is different. Um, and I'm actually much more apt to make it automatic for one side of that equation than the other. Or um, the other way to deal with this, I think in a transparent way is to make it um, based on a, a resolution or a decision of council every budgetary year where it comes before council, say in the early fall uh, and council simply, you know, makes the decision, uh, you know, in a transparent way to the public. So those are two of the thoughts that I had and I'll sort of pull back and see how the rest of council feels. Councilor Taylor. I agree with you on that. I don't support clause two, three. However, I wonder why you would even want to go ahead with this new pay policy. That we've just came up with the uh, 60th, 70th percentile policy. And if that passes next week, uh, the management team is going to have to go away and do a lot of work to come together with a plan that they're going to have to come, come with us. That leaves in place the old policy. And the old policy does have principles of fair and equitable in it. And those principles of fair and equitable will undoubtedly have suggestions on how we're arrived at while trying to achieve the 6th and 7th percentile as well. So I'm not sure why we're going ahead with this new policy with uh, even, even any part of it. Well, just stick with the old policy, see what we get coming back with uh, with uh, the 67th uh, percentile policy. Because this, this says uh, equitable, fair. This says that periodically, uh, regarding your point, Periodically, the external wage uh, comparisons have to be made and compared to us, and then that has to fit into this as well. So it's got that in here. The old policy already has that in there. It seems a little premature to move ahead with a new policy with a COLA clause. That's my thoughts. Uh, I have a uh, clarifying question. Then, I mean, if that if that uh, target set at sixty seven percent. Would it be administration's um, <clears throat> feeling that they should put a plan together to come back to us? Or is that then your purview to manage to that number? Um, through the chair, I, I think it would be important for council to understand the steps that we're taking in order to complete this policy. As it was mentioned, this isn't a plan that council We'd be seeking approval for because we need to manage this based on a lot of different factors and a lot of different factors that are coming in the future. So um, I think it's important that we communicate how exactly we're going to to make this work because there are it, it's not very simple in, in this uh, in this environment. So 
uh, council needs to be aware of how we're going to get there and the implications of how we're going to get there because there will be some risks and implications associated with the lower percentile amounts um, specifically when we're discussing this with the union i like that answer Councilor McGoon and Mayor Michaels. Yeah, and in responding to Councilor Taylor's concern, I think the big thing for myself is the how that the past pay policy practices have sort of been communicated to council, especially as it relates to non-unionized staff. Um, I found uh, in the past, not this, this past year, but previous to that, you know, we would grapple with the COLA decision. Uh, and the COLA decision was brought to council and often, you know, at a very high level, it was communicated, uh, non-unionized staff are not paid to the same sort of uh, increases in degree with their salary uh, that, say, unionized staff are. But that's sort of where the discussion ended. Um, and then when we did the deep dive into the actual numbers this year and we looked at, well, how are we uh, compensating non-unionized staff compared to other organizations, we actually found that we were comparatively much higher than I think than we thought we were. So it comes down to the how. If in subsequent years we did receive a very thorough package that said, well, this is where the town of Hinton compensates compared to other organizations, I'd have good data to make that decision. But if it looked more like we have in the past where the COLA discussion was, well, here's a COLA discussion. We don't pay as much as other people. Well, where are the numbers? I need to see the proof. So that for me to respond to your question, that's the crux of that decision is I felt this year we had much better information to go on than we had in previous years. So. Mayor Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do want to clarify. It was my understanding that the previous direction for the 67th percentile would impact policy 1902. So I would suggest, uh, and if, I don't know if Jen still has that consensus or Miss Davy Campbell, uh, but uh, I don't want to speak for my fellow counselors who supported it, but I think their intent was to change a 67 percentile in policy 1902. So if that policy changes or is approved, I would highly suggest that even though those who are against having policy 1902 make amendments in case that passes, because as of right now, 1902 is going to come back to us amended and, and potentially passed. Uh, and if not, vote against this, uh, the, the current uh, consensus, and uh, plead your case to uh, uh, use the previous uh, policy as the one moving forward. So I just want to clarify that 1902 was the assumption that would be amended and then therefore passed potentially. Thank you. Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So to bring the conversation back to the consensus request that's on the table, um, I won't support fully removing 2.3. Uh, I think it's important that the uh, pay policy has a reference to go in here. I don't like the uncertainty and pressure that it puts on council, that it comes to council every time there's a request for a cut for a call increase. I further don't think it's fair to the employees to not know whether they're going to receive a COLA increase or how much it's going to be. I would much prefer that it's governed by policy. If council or committee wants to have a conversation about changing the formula that's in 2.3.1 or anywhere 2.3 for that matter, I'm perfectly happy to do that but I'm not going to support removing 2.3 in its entirety. Thank you. Councillor Dugan. No, I, Councillor Ostashek's right. I want to speak. I, I don't want to speak if it's not related to the direction on the table. Okay. Um, any other comments as it relates to the consensus? Uh, sure. If, if I could, I'll, I'll just uh, provide my advice. We... Uh, we as administration thought that the, having a COLA clause uh, put into this policy was an important and for many of the reasons that Councillor Ostash had brought up. But once again, I'm going to keep harping on the, the equity of how we pay our employees and having that upfront for employees and council. I think the um, 
last few years, which is would be an equity when it comes to cola because cola for let's say 70 percent of our staff is determined in one process and they get one thing and then the rest of the staff cola is determined through another process and in the last three years they didn't get anything so that was a big uh, a big portion of this policy that we wanted to bring in to say that there had to be some consistency in how we came to uh, this determination and that's why we tied it partly to um, the Alberta CPI and partly to what has been negotiated through the collective bargaining with the, uh, with the union. Anyone else? Okay, I call the question to seek consensus. The committee removes section 2.3 of the paid principal policy HR 1902. All in favor? Opposed? And that is defeated. Councilor McGoon. Uh, I would like to seek consensus. Excuse me, sorry. Sure. Who is all in favor of Councilor Race? Here, Michaels and Taylor. Sorry, Councilor Taylor. Like to seek consensus that committee amend section 2.3.2 .2 to reflect a maximum of 2%. Would you like to speak to that? Please, I think again we're we're talking about that transparency angle and how how council communicates this with our our citizen base and you know just maintains this a level of fairness as was indicated by both councillor Ostachik uh, and the CAO. I I agree. I think COLA is important. Um, you know, and we're really again we're looking to strike a balance between the two. And in this case, I think what we're saying is that if that increase is less than two percent, yeah, it will be an automatic. Uh, however, if it's going to be more than that, and I think we're really starting to look at some potential impacts to the budget quite seriously at that point, then it has to be done by resolution. I think 2% is a, a lot more reasonable for myself, whether that's the will of council, we'll see. Thank you. Um, Councillor Taylor. Well, can I ask how um, section 512 affects that? So we're going to get into potentially 2% uh, increases for quite a while. But on an annual basis, if the, um, say, we're out of this union contract and the union's getting half a percent or lower because things have settled down and uh, we're under budget uh, pressures, um, does council still, by doing 1.2, um, get a say? By what? Which one? Proving annual budgets under which the salaries fall. So do we have a say on, is it there? Uh, what I'm trying to say is if we approve 2.32, 2 are we approving potentially that type of increase in perpetuity? Or if we run into a budget situation that's critical in circumstances that are different, we would have to revise the policy to change it. CEO Panasic. Uh, through the chairs, no. Uh, the budget is under council's discretion. So the council has the clarity to know what COLA is going to be in there because that's dictated to the policy. But ultimately, the, the budget and everything in it is at council's discretion. So this is the, the policy really dictates to administration what will be put into the budget. The budget has to be approved by council. If council has issues with anything in the budget, we can go back and have that discussion. Good. Um, and I have myself next in queue, and and I I will speak in favor of this. Um, it uh, I think it it uh, real income is important, particularly in environments where we see this this kind of inflationary impact, um, and 
the other thing I like about this is it doesn't say that we couldn't pay the four and a half percent if there's a discussion and uh, justifications brought forward that this is important that it happened. Uh, but I think a check in at, I mean, if that increase is 5% on what's our salary level, $2 million, significant, very significant number. Um, and for that to trigger automatically, I think again, back to our job to sort of um, to keep track of the dollars and cents as it, pay, that, as it relates to the rate payers is important. Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I actually want to clarify my understanding was actually the opposite. Um, sure, we control the budget, but we can't say we're not paying any employees this year. Like we only have a limited amount of capabilities on the budget. We don't approve salaries. That's automatic. And this policy mandates that anything under 2% is automatically paid. We cannot then revert back. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I believe. Because uh, it specifically says, uh, if amended and approved, that COLA will be paid to a maximum of 2% annually. Town Council must by resolution approve any COLA increase more than 2%. That to me is pretty intuitive that anything under two is automatically done. It's budget lined in the budget, but we can't revoke that based on policy. That's my understanding. So just to clarify, I'd like to go to CEO Panasic that um, we either have to, I believe, change the wording of this because it's redundant. If council can revoke 2% or less, then why would we need a resolution to approve anything above? We need a motion to approve any. Um, I, I, I see a major issue there. Uh, through the chair. So policy is yours, right? So if there are once again, this has to be because it's not a contractual obligation uh, that we get X percent like it is possibly with uh, possibly with union. But uh, but this is just the policy that council puts in for clarity purposes. The budget, you absolutely have that authority at the budget time to to look at to look really at anything. I mean, there's implications to all decisions that you make and there may be implications to this, but very, very little. It's not like we're making decisions on somebody's uh, salary that have been that has been agreed to, right? Uh, the agreement here is council's council's resolution to say this is what's going to be included in the budget based on this plan. But ultimately the budget is at the discretion of council and council can make those changes if they see necessary. Can I follow up? If you would, that'd be great. And um, I, I support the 2% um, and below automatic. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'd actually, if we're going to do that and that's the intent, I don't know if there's a way to make it where it's automatic. Uh, I, I still struggle with the wording that then we need a motion for anything above 2%. Well, technically, yeah, I don't know. Um, if there's a way to guarantee it, I'd like to give that stability then to it, maybe it's not the will of council, but if we approve it here, just to to backdoor it through budget time to be able to take away and go against the policy, kind of defeats the purpose. I appreciate the explanation; it gives flexibility, but I don't know if that's the flexibility. If we're okay with this, I think any council who goes against policy that's pretty explicit <laughs> like that, uh, I don't know if I want that in in even my purview is what I'm saying. So I don't know if we can get there, but. If there's an appetite to make that mandatory to be fair and equitable to only remove it during budget time i don't i thought we were going in a different road there so just my thoughts thanks i guess for clarity because um yeah we have the ability to uh uh to set the budget but not as it relates to people's particular salary i mean we could say we're only going to approve this amount of money go figure out who gets paid and who doesn't. But I mean, this clause certainly could flow through at budget time um, automatically, uh, but we're just looking at the macro number at that level. I mean, I don't foresee that we would rescind this 2% increase. It would be a comment on the cost of providing the service. 
back to the CO capacity through the chair. That, that's correct. It, essentially, what this does is just it eliminates the need to make individual decisions at that point. Like, you know, council can still have that discussion if they they have issues with it, but essentially what you'll see at budget time, um, you know, we have a policy that it dictates a uh, formula. Uh, in the global budget, we will identify any increases as part of those increases. We'll just say, you know, and based on the formula through policy, it's been this much increased, right? Instead of bringing an RFD and uh, uh, making decisions, it just provides a little bit of clarity to everybody in the process. But I just the, the comment to, to solidifying it, it is difficult other than putting it into contract on how we can actually make this because ultimately council has the control over budgets um, and anything shy of in, um, embedding it into contracts. I don't know if we could solidify this number to the degree we're talking about. Councilor Stashik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, mainly supporting the consensus request. And the reason I'm supporting it is because of the clause that's in the last part of 2.3.2 uh, that council can approve any call increase more than 2%. And the reason I think that's important is in the future, if we have an anomaly year like we did this year in 2022, with really high inflation rates, it can be brought for council's consideration to talk about doing more. I think that's important as a responsible employer to make sure that our, our <clears throat> employees' purchasing power isn't being reduced by an increasing gap between inflation and, and uh, cost of living increases. I think that's important to be able to consider but I do think that it should be done in an open venue <clears throat> during council consideration because it does have a significant budgetary impact. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Taylor. No, that's fine. All right. Anyone else? All right. So I call the question to seek consensus. The committee amends section 2.3.2 to reflect a maximum of 2%. All in favor? Opposed? And that is carried six to one. Councilor Magoon. Uh, I have a question regarding the recommended direction at uh, the top of page. Sorry, I've got to get back up there. The top of page 14, uh, really just as it regards to the uh, recommended date, bring it back to January 17th, regular council meeting. I, for one, would not obviously would not be in support of any decisions or part of me any um, recommended amendments that comes out of committee of the whole that have you know uh, negative uh, legal complications as the our CAO indicated. I guess my question is: Can we anticipate that we will have a uh, a thorough enough legal um, either section in our? Uh, request for decision on the 17th uh, that will be able to make that decision? Or are we expecting that based on the uh, amendments that have come out of tonight, we may actually have to put off that regular council meeting to say the, the next regular council meeting? Administration? Uh, through the chair. Uh, yes, based on the amendments today, we would like a little bit more time to just get legal opinion on everything and make sure that we, we cross our T's and dot our I's before bringing it back. So. I think we would be looking at um, February 7th. Yes, um, I believe we'd be looking at February 7th as possibly a target date. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Councilor Taylor? At that time, we do have this. Uh, implementation plan for how to achieve the 67th percentile or does that come after we make the decision on the 67th percentile uh, through the chair that would that's likely to come afterwards okay thanks hey council 
committee, whoever you are, how do you want to deal with this? Council of Sasha, Mr. Chair, I'd like to see consensus that committee direct administration to bring the draft A principles policy HR 1902 as amended to the regular council meeting of February 7th, 2023. Speak to it. Uh, no. Okay. Anyone else? I'll wait till it's up. Let me add here. Mr. Chair, well, it's coming up, may I? Please. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, no, I think it's just important really to note that, at least for myself, and I'm, I'm sure for the rest of council too, uh, I'm really interested to see what some of those legal implications are prior to that meeting. Again, you know, it's it's one thing to batter these things around in committee of the whole and say, oh, okay, well, this sounds like a good, good idea right now. Um, but if if there's anything that we've sort of looked at tonight that does have any long lasting negative ramifications, yeah, I'm just not willing to support that in the long term. You know, if it's going to take us a little longer to work on it, then it takes us a little longer to work on it, make sure that we're making good decisions. Thank you. Relating to the consensus request? Related to his comment. All right, please. I don't think you're going to have that totally until we get the implementation plan. I'm going to run the implementation plan by the lawyer. Like, all we're going to get is, is you going to be okay with 67%? That's what the lawyer's going to come back in. No sort of stashing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I've got a little bit of a concern with the direction this conversation is going. It's not up to council to decide how to implement the direction that council's given. That's a, that's the duties of administration. And I'm perfectly content to give administration the direction that they need and to have them go out and figure out how they're going to implement the direction that council's been given. Them. Thank you. All right, so any other comments before I move on? So call me. Uh, uh, well, I'll have to fix it. Yeah, that's, sorry, go ahead. No, that's no, okay. Sorry. sorry. That's okay. The, the committee seek consensus to direct administration. to bring the draft A principles policy HR1902 as amended to the regular council meeting on February 7th, 2023. Yeah. All right, then I will call to question that committee seek consensus to direct administration to bring the draft pay, pay principles policy HR 1902 as amended to the regular council meeting on February 7th, 2023. All in favor. And that's passed unanimously. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sorry, Stuart. That's past six to one. Um, all right. <clears throat> so down to 5.5, .5, the Northern Regional Economic Development Grant Administration. Thank you, Chair, to the rest of the committee. So uh, this is a relatively short notice turnaround that uh, a new Northern and Regional Economic Development or NRED grant program has 
just been released with a, um, a date for application of January 22nd. So we turned it around as administration. We provided a few options for council, but did want endorsement from, um, from the committee here today. Uh, we will provide this uh, as a formal motion on the 17th, but because of the tight turnaround with January 22nd, we wanted to get some buy-in from the committee here today so we could put our weight behind getting an application done for that date and uh, have enough time to put together a, a strong application. So um, so we have a few options available. Um, the strategy behind the options that have been provided for all of them actually is to leverage what we've already committed and leverage what we've already budgeted to try to just double up that money for additional <laughs> additional items or in uh, certain circumstances to offset uh, future year budgets uh, for us as the town of Hinton. We also have a handout that has been provided to everybody uh, because it is a partnership opportunity that we have with the Chamber of Commerce and in conversations with Natalie, we have determined that we can partner on an application as, as you see here today, or we can simply uh, look to provide a letter of support uh, for their app application and make a separate application of the town of Hinton. So we have a few options for consideration. Um, the first being the metal silhouettes trail connectivity phase one, all of which have been budgeted in, budgeted in for 2023 and the Green Square Historical Sign, for, uh, which is budgeted for 2024. Um, the option number two, we have our 23 and 2024 contributions to Pathway to the Park. We have reached out to uh, to that agency and they have provided support in our, in, if we did decide to make an application um, leveraging the fifty thousand dollars that we budgeted in 2023 to get an additional fifty thousand uh, dollars which would cover off our 2024 contribution and the option number three is to include essentially everything into one option and go for uh, go for a higher higher amount of money i do want to preface this to say this is only a two million dollar province-wide grant so strategy wise i think going for a lower amount you get it you have a much better shot just because this is very small and it's two million dollars spread out between two streams one northern indigenous, and one for everybody else we're in the everybody else category so I'm going to make an assumption that a, a good majority of that $2 million is going to go to the Northern and Indigenous stream. But uh, with that that being said, uh, if there's any other questions from the committee, I'd be happy to answer. Um, and I, I, uh, Councillor Haas. Yeah, so I appreciate those uh, those comments. That was one of my questions about, you know, like being such a small grant. I, I guess I do have one clarifying question in regards to options two and three, adding the pathway to the park. It's not that I'm against it, but when I'm looking at page 33 of 45 in the application, it says eligible products must not take more than two years to complete. And I'm just curious, does that project then fit and align with this? Because I mean, this is not a project that's going to happen in two years. So when I was looking at that, I was just wondering, does that actually fit? Uh, through the chair. So the project that we would be putting forward would not be the completion of the Pathway to the Park project. The project that we would be submitting really is the planning and design for that project. And that's the project that we would be submitting to the grant. But yeah, the, the project in its entirety uh, won't be a part of the project. That's more of the future, but we'll be very specific to this as a planning. Um, you know, it's it's more the preliminary stages is what we're applying for, and that's the project. Okay, thank you. Good, Councilman Good. Uh, thank you. Uh, question regarding option four on page twenty nine. Uh, are we looking to potentially like it's not by default that we've included the uh, application as a joint application with the chamber? we're looking to add that into any potential motion made by council separately. 
through the chair. So this is another option for council um, when it comes to an application. We this is a whole separate uh, option that we could consider, which is to essentially it's to utilize the seventy thousand dollars that we've committed for the destination marketing administrator and using that to. Um, to leverage for an additional seventy thousand dollars for um, for the training modules and the visitor friendly uh, project with the chamber, so we can partner with the chamber. We can uh, have a project uh, just as a as the town of Hinton, or um, and so, and still provide a letter of support if we if we'd like to do that. Okay. Are you good? Totally. <clears throat> okay, my question is mathematical. Isn't it match funding? Yes. Because <clears throat> we have a project of 120,000 grant potential of 60,000. Wouldn't it be grant potential of 120,000? Sorry, what would... Well, so that? so option one yeah. on page three, <clears throat> 29 to 45, so the total project is 120,000 and we've got potential grant funding of 60,000. Isn't it match funding? Like, wouldn't it be 120,000 as potential grant? Isn't it doubling the money? So what we're, pro <laughs> what we're providing here is that we're actually going to, um, we're looking to leverage that to, for it to pay half of it. We could leverage the total amount and we could have an additional $120,000 to do something else. But what we were doing is that we were leveraging the money, uh, looking for half, to try to get half funded for just it. Just because so, it's like smaller. Just because it's a smaller grant. You're absolutely right. You could say that uh, for these three projects, you know, for 120000 and we could add to that amount to come up with an additional something to use that additional 120,000 for, but it would be the, the same calculation based on here. Cause we're still I see. Yeah, yeah, half yeah. of the okay. project still be, but that's right, Taylor. Um, we could do one and four, but we like, we could send the chamber or a letter of support or be their partner. And we could apply for uh, option one for ourselves to get this stuff that we wanted to do anyways at uh, half price. That's correct. Thank Mayor you. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On that note, uh, is it more prudent to do it separately, or do we add this the 70 to the 120? Uh, I'm just trying to think from a, a leverage perspective, they get two applications, right? Um, or I know it's a bit odd, but could you have part of an application be joint while still submitting the rest? And if not, then we could just do two. Um, through the chair, uh, to that comment, you could uh, you can certainly do both. We could partner with the chamber on their application and also make our own. Um, you know, it's we get into a strategy discussion on grants. You know, my my personal view on that, and that's all it is, is that if you put a whole bunch of things forward. Um, sometimes the grants, uh, the granting agencies, they think because you haven't identified what's the most important, they don't want to risk giving anything. Uh, but if you put forward one thing and you put your full weight behind it, then you have a chance. But uh, uh, there's also another strategy discussion that could be had on uh, casting a wide net and seeing what they get. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Taylor? Uh, just to uh, go ahead with option one, just to be clear, a trail connect connectivity phase one, that's um, mm -hmm. actually doing work on the ground. Yes. That's not a planned project, correct? No. That, so that's uh, like signs, uh, physically connecting this trail to this trail, you know, putting in the gravel for the trail, it's actually doing work, right? Yeah, that's good. Michaels. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll put forward the recommended action for the for this time. Administration recommends the committee endorse a northern regional economic development application for Metal to the West Trail connectivity phase one in Green Square historical signage for a total of 120. Thank you.
Speak to it. Nope. Good. Thank you. Councilor Stasha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just before it gets called to question, I think question about strategy, I guess. Uh, in a grant like this, that's got a, it's a pretty limited dollar value. Strategically, does it make sense to have our name on two applications or does that mean the granting committee is gonna take a look and go, yeah, no, there's only $2 million. Hinton's got their name on two, they're not getting both. Uh, and that we're limiting our potential to get this one if we endorse the uh, chamber one or is there any restriction in that grant that you can apply for two? Uh, through the chair, no, you, you can apply for it many as you'd like, um, you know, supporting other applications, there may be, there may be some risk associated with it. I can't say for sure, but there's certainly, you know, some granting agencies or some individuals might see it as, well, you know, if everything's important to them, they're not even all that important to them and they prefer applications with their full weight behind it. Um, and not, uh, you know, Ethic the word, but we're not hedging our bets, I suppose. Uh, but uh, on the other side, you know, supporting uh, the other local um, applications, I'm not sure how much they would look at that as the letter of support. But can I follow up, Mr. Chair? Please. Um, so my understanding then is that if if somebody puts forward the, that committee support option four as well. It's actually the chamber that's applying. It's not really a joint application. It's more of a letter of support to the chamber that the town is putting their, their, their blessing on using that money to leverage, uh, to leverage the, uh, uh, the grant, correct? Through the chair, uh, <laughs> someone, but it's a little bit different than a letter or in this option, we can provide a letter of support, absolutely. But we are actually looking at being a joint applicant, which means that we may not want to apply for our own. And that also means that joint applications do have a lot more weight behind them. They look, they're they looked on very favorably. So if we're, you know, we're a part of that project. Um, it's just a little bit different than sending a letter of support because we are on the application and, um, I think it sends a different message. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So can I follow up on that then? So, but we could just provide a letter of support, not yeah. have it be a joint application. Then the yeah. letter would say, yeah, use our 70 grand to go and get the money. Mm -hmm. Right? That is an option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Any other comments as it relates to the uh, consensus? <clears throat> All right. Well, then I call a question. The committee endorses an NRED. I learned that today. That's how you pronounce that acronym. Application for metal silhouettes, trail connectivity, phase one, and the green square historical signage for a total of $120,000. All in favor. Isn't it for a total of $60,000? Uh, the total project is $120,000. The grant funding really seeks money. Okay. Uh, Councillor McGoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that committee endorses a. I'm oh, sorry, I'll. Sorry, Jen. I'm waiting until you're good. That committee endorses a letter of support as requested by the Hinton Chamber of Commerce in an email dated January 10th. 2023. Like speak to it? No, it's pretty, pretty plain. It's pretty spoken to. <laughs> Any other comments, thoughts? Councillor Taylor. 
probably unnecessary. You mean that we're supposed we're, we're going to send a letter of support to the Chamber of Commerce for the project that council is our committee's going to send a letter of support. I'd accept that as a friendly amendment, Mr. Chair. I think that's reasonable. So you're replacing the word endorses with, with stands. Stand. Yeah. I think that's what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's better verbiage. Thank Mayor Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just to clarify, this is not endorsing an application, a joint application. This is simply just a letter, not the application. Um, I, I, I will actually not support this. I'm fine doing a joint application. I know there's some risk. Our total, if, if a joint application is done and the chamber benefits from it, uh, our total would be 105,000, which still is half of the amount. Mm -hmm. This is a, a short turnaround. I don't think, uh, but I, I obviously can't confirm how much uh, intake it will have. But to me, I think we have to look at our relationships and just if, if it at the end of the day, and we may never know if that impacted our 60,000, then so be it. Then the chamber got something. Maybe we might not get anything and the chamber will get something. Uh, and we wouldn't have got anything anyways. It's a, it's a shell game. It's hard. So I like to do the joint with them and then maybe get both. Uh, this, just a letter. Uh, you're just adding a letter. I, I, don't, I don't think that'll have a major impact. A joint application, they do look heavy, like more heavily as CEO Panassi said. So for that, I, I won't support this, but I would support a direction to actually apply it with them. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm good. Um, yeah, uh, I guess really I'm, the reason I made the direction I did is that that is exactly what the Chamber of Commerce asked for. Sort of don't want to impose our view of, they emailed us and said, we would like to ask council for a letter of support to leverage the money's already committed to. Not, we would like council to join us in an application. So mm -hmm. if somebody wants to clarify that for me. Yeah, point of mm -hmm. clarification, if, if that's the case, then I support it. But option four, as administration indicated on page uh has just different wording. It says to do a joint application, and then there was, yeah. So you open us uh, through the chair in, in conversations. Natalie, I did have this conversation, and uh, the um, uh, our conversation essentially said that the chamber is open to working with the town in any way, shape, or form that uh, we would prefer to. So if we would like to do a joint application in conversation, uh, that would be supported by. Uh, the chamber, or if we would like to send a letter of support, that would also be supported by the chamber um, and chair. I believe that Ms. Jim has a clarifying point. Uh, thank you, CIO Classic, and, and through the chair to the rest of the committee. I do have to clarify, having sat in the um, seminars that were presented by the, the facilitators of this grant program, I believe that uh, each entity can only submit one grant application. And I would anticipate that if we were to submit one for those other projects and then one again as a joint applicant, I don't think that's going to fly. Uh, that having been said, there is an alternative option, which is to bundle the, the chamber uh, project in with the, um, the town projects and then do a joint. So put them together as a bundle. Um, the challenge will be making sure that each of the components are well connected because the same the same facilitator said that you really do need to demonstrate that multi-component projects are, are cohesive. But I think on the tourism front, it may be possible to do that. So I would just like to suggest that the, the committee consider either the town submits its own application and gives a letter of support for the, the uh, chamber's separate application, or that we bundle, but not that we do two applications that we put our name on on both applications because i fear that that might not fly all right well i have myself and then councillor sashik i'll get to you uh having heard that then i i do support this i initially um was with mayor michaels but i mean once that number gets up to the hundred and whatever thousand there's two million dollars across the whole province i think we end up pricing ourselves up mm -hmm. essentially um and uh, so i i will support this uh and wish the chamber well in their application uh councillor stashik thank you mr chair i'm going to support the consensus request as as worded 
Uh, that was my concern about having our name on two different applications when there's only $2 million available. Um, I think this gives a good opportunity for the chamber to be able to uh, get what they're looking for and the town without putting one or both of the applications at risk. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. And one additional comment I'll make just because I sat in on another session today is, is um, they like um, when um, uh, money's coming from different levels of government. So hopefully just it's our money that they're using to make the applications. So hopefully that straightens it as well. Anyone else? Okay, then I'll call the question that committee send a letter of support as requested by the Hinton and District Chamber of Commerce in an email dated January 10th, 2023. All in favor? You're in favor this time, right? Yeah. All right, that's passed unanimously. Thank you for noticing that, Richard. <laughs> I just thought who wouldn't support that last one? Um, all right, so that brings us to the end of uh, our reports from administration and uh, let's move on then to reporting and we'll start with council reports and we'll start on my left with council rates thank you sir i have nothing to report Councilor ross other than happy new year to everybody the uh, nothing to report at this time nothing to report mr chair how is hawaii amazing <laughs> mayor michael nothing to report thank you and so stash i have nothing to report mr chair Councilor taylor nothing and I have nothing to report. So that puts it back to you then, CEO Panasic. Uh, to the chair, happy new year to everybody. I don't have a whole bunch to report, uh, but one of the big items we have re-engaged with Wes Frazier on discussions when it comes to our uh, uh, water treatments and uh, the options there. So in short order, council will be brought into those discussions and uh, um, that's all I have to report at this time. Go ahead. Uh, you were first. Oh, it's okay. No. Um, I just uh, did. You have anything to add on the order issue uh, the other day? Like the uh, order, the order was uh, particularly uh, bad in the lower part of the valley, and uh, I mean, I noticed it uh, personally. I had emails, and uh, I noticed lots of feedback on uh, Facebook. You were going to touch base with the. Uh, uh, West Fraser and then get back to us, I understand. And I just think that in a situation like that, maybe to get out to the, help them get out to the public, to tell the public uh, what's going on and where if they have a concern they should report this to, like it's gotta be a ministry of environment number that they should be phoning or something. Uh, so through the chair, thank you for that. Uh, the, I did have a discussion with West Fraser on the order. Uh, they were, they were, Troubleshooting uh, the best that they can. They actually shut the mill completely down on the Thursday uh, to do nothing but troubleshoot and try to get to the bottom of this uh, this issue. They they're not sure what is causing the odor uh, because it it could be anything. It could be a uh, a leaky gasket or uh, one of the electronics uh, malfunctioning, and they're they're having a difficulty. They're having some difficulties in diagnosing the problem, but they are uh, taking it serious and they are trying to to uh, to get that. So we're uh, so that's all I have to report at this time. They are working on it. They're hoping that they will uh, be able to get that fixed. No, sir. Thank you. I guess just a quick question. Uh, it was mentioned uh, in December the uh, the uh, new developments that go up uh, at a council doing a tour of the small uh, dwellings uh, behind uh, Pine Valley Lodge. I'm just wondering if that's still something that we're going to, because I know that they were trying to get residents in there quite, you know, in the early in the new year. So is that something that is coming up soon or going to be scheduled? I will refer that to Jen. Yes, I'm just waiting to hear from uh, the Evergreens Foundation to schedule the building. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Councilor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I forgot to say this. Last week, I got to ride the bus. And I have to say, Mike is one of the politest, nicest people I have met. He's the driver. He greeted every person who got on that bus. And everybody who got off the bus, without fail, said thank you to him. Every one of them. So uh, it was a real treat. And I'll be riding that bus again because I don't want to lose my bus stop. 
<laughs> I, I don't it's right outside my house. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. So anything else then see about uh, Panasic. Nothing for All right. Council. Councilor Oz. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed if any.